Welcome to this video tutorial from the National Union of Students. This tutorial introduces you to the principles and practice of qualitative data analysis, focusing particularly on using it to analyse free text comments in the National Student Survey. Qualitative data analysis, QDA, is the range of processes and procedures whereby we move from the qualitative data that have been collected into some form of explanation, understanding or interpretation of the people and situations we are investigating. Qualitative research is all about understanding the participants' point of view. How they view the world is articulated through language. When analysing qualitative data, you're looking at depth, detail and complexity. Context is crucial. What connection to the social world does the participant have? For example, when submitting a student-led teaching award or NSS comment, has the student had a good or bad university experience? How is this expressed through their qualitative account? So what is qualitative research used for? It's used to gain an understanding of underlying reasons, opinions and motivations. It provides insights into the problem or helps to develop ideas or hypotheses for potential quantitative research. Qualitative research is also used to undercover trends in thought and opinions and dive deeper into the problem. In the NSS, qualitative comments can help you to better understand your quantitative figures. There are a number of things to remember when undertaking qualitative analysis. Firstly, the data are not representative in the way that quantitative data can be. Each account is an individual summation of their experience, and you can't aggregate these and claim one quote as representative. You can identify common themes and trends, but each person's experience is unique to themselves. There are a number of different ways of doing analysis. We will outline one approach, but you might find another that works best for you. The level of analysis is up to you. You could look at one particular department or demographic of students, identify a key theme for your whole institution, or only analyse comments about a certain theme. It depends what you want to achieve from your analysis. Also, bear in mind the possibility of further study. Qualitative analysis of your data may pose as many questions as answers. You may wish to follow up with further quantitative research or look at another data set. QDA is usually based on an interpretive philosophy. The idea is to examine the meaningful and symbolic content of qualitative data. By analysing interview data, the researcher may be attempting to identify any or all of someone's interpretation of the world, why they have that point of view, how they came to that view, what they've been doing, how they conveyed their view of their situation, and how they identify or classify themselves and others in what they say. There are several types of qualitative data sets. Semiotic analysis involves analysing signs and symbols. For example, a participant captures an image and is filmed whilst talking through what the image means to them. It's important to note that the analysis is of the picture and its meaning in a particular social context. Conversational analysis looks at a conversation between two or more people, observed unprompted. Analysis might look at the words used, time speaking, topics covered, or the behaviour of the participants. Narrative analysis focuses on the way people make and use stories to interpret the world. Usually undertaken as semi-structured interviews, looking at accounts of the past or someone's life story, narrative analysis can give a deep insight into a particular person or a particular society, time or event. A thematic analysis looks at multiple qualitative accounts in the form of answers to preset questions. This form of analysis is more interviewer directed than the other types of qualitative data sets and focuses on picking out key themes. This is the type of analysis we'll undertake on national student survey comments and frequently on student-led teaching awards. You can apply different analytic methods to a data set depending on how the data has been collected. In a framework analysis, you aren't coding the data from scratch using the content. You go in with your own codes or research questions and find evidence of them in the data. An example of this is the technique shown in our previous video about NSS comments, where you can apply filters to search for comments about a specific keyword based on low scores in your quantitative data. A grounded theory approach means you have no pre-existing thoughts about what the data might prove. You go in essentially with a blank canvas and see what themes are present. The researcher then makes a decision as to which theme to explore in more depth. In this type of analysis, the theory emerges from the data rather than the other way around. We're going to focus on grounded theory, and so this requires everyone to approach the data set with an open mind. Grounded theory is about naming, defining and understanding what people say. The theory emerges out of the data rather than being developed in advance. We aim to begin with as few predetermined ideas as possible, letting the data guide us. Coding is shaped by the researcher's interpretation of the data. We don't have any codes in mind when we start the analysis. 
It's characterized by different types and levels of code, helping us to synthesize and group certain themes. Categories of data are created and refined through constant comparison. Analysis and data collection are iterative processes, and codes can be revised or changed at any point during the analysis process. Finally, the endpoint is theoretical saturation, where you've got as much as you can usefully glean from your data. So that's the theory. Now we're going to look at the practical application of thematic analysis and what coding means. A key question for all research is validity. If we're using qualitative research to draw conclusions about what students think or want, it's important that we can account for how we've made certain inferences and came to our conclusions. Having more than one person undertaking the analysis in the form of an analysis or coding group will help to increase the validity of your data as multiple people will need to agree on how each piece of data is coded. With highly subjective qualitative data, this is important to ensure that your conclusions can be backed up. Reliability is also a key issue. If someone else undertook your analysis, would they find the same results? Be aware of the boundaries of the claims that you make from analysing your qualitative data and remain transparent throughout your analysis about all the processes you've used. Are there any instances that contradict the claims you're making? Disruptions can exist and not contradict your argument. Be upfront about these anomalies and this will help your reliability. When we talk about coding, the formal definition is the identification of passages of text or other meaningful phenomena such as parts of images and applying labels to them that indicate their examples of some thematic idea. At its simplest, this labelling or coding process enables researchers quickly to retrieve and collect together all the text and other data that they've associated with some thematic idea so that they can be examined together and different cases can be compared in that respect. You're putting your responses into categories that will allow you to dig deeper into what exactly the issues are with, say, feedback or course organisation. Coding aims to define, understand and explain what's happening in the data. There are several stages, the first being initial coding. If you were working with qualitative data other than NSS comments, such as student-led teaching awards, you'd want to number each line in the data so it's easier to reference back later on. With NSS comments, the easiest approach is to export them to Excel and number each comment. At the initial coding stage, you're aiming to make the data more manageable. Try and reduce each key idea into one or two words, for example, workload clustering or illegible feedback. Don't be too broad at this stage. We'll group similar comments together at stage two. At stage two, you're starting to group your initial codes to create categories or themes, for example, feedback or personal tutors. This allows you to bring together all the comments about a particular topic to see what the main issues are through the more granular initial codes. If more than one of you is coding, make sure that you compare your data to ensure that your codes are comparable. Here's an example of what your level one and two codes might look like for NSS comments. The left-hand column shows your stage one codes, summarizing the key concept or concepts from each comment. After reviewing your initial codes, this researcher has settled on three level two codes of deadlines, feedback quality, and support. Each researcher might use slightly different categories. You might think a different level two code would be more appropriate. This is why it's important for the people in an analysis group to meet up regularly and compare their findings. This may result in changes to some codes to make the work fit better together. At some point, you'll reach theoretical saturation. This is where you reach a point where no new information is coming out of the data. Particularly with NSS comments, it's possible to keep on analysing the data for weeks and weeks, but you should consider whether this is worth the time and resource you're putting in. Will spending another few days analysing the comments be the best use of your time to help create change for students? Be realistic about your time and resources and stop your analysis at a sensible point when you have some findings to present. You have a great deal of flexibility when writing up your qualitative analysis, so make it your own. A suggested format you could use is to summarise your findings by category or theme. For each theme, introduce your findings, include quotes to illustrate and then discuss the implications of your findings. You could add a separate section at the end of your report summarising your recommendations for further research or change, or include this after each theme. Whatever your approach, ensure you evidence reliability and validity, summarising how the research was undertaken. Some final tips on writing up your findings. In qualitative research, we always refer to findings rather than results. This is because qualitative analysis is more subjective and subject to research or interpretation, so we don't wish to claim the certainty of having found definitive results. Similarly, try to avoid quantifying your data. Mentioning the number of comments for a specific theme can highlight the importance of a certain issue to the student body, but try not to say things like half or a majority. Particularly with NSS comments, where students themselves choose which themes they wish to comment on, 
Comments can't be said to be representative of the whole cohort's views. It's safer to summarise with phrases like broad schools of thought or broad consensus, highlighting any anomalies to ensure validity. Thank you for watching. If you have any queries, please contact nss.nus.org.uk.